Welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at the introduction to HIV. But before we begin, let's revise the question I asked in the previous session. That is, which structure is responsible for the production of cerebrospinal fluid? The answer is the choroid blessus. Congratulations to all those who have gotten it right. Let's proceed and look at the introduction to HIV. And the question is, what does HIV stand for? We should know that HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. That is why we write it as HIV. And another thing about HIV is that it takes about two to 10 years for it to progress to AIDS, telling you that AIDS and HIV, they are not the same. AIDS is the terminal stage of HIV. They are not the same. Then the question is, what does AIDS stand for? For AIDS, it stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Let's proceed by looking at the features of HIV. So for the first one, we are seeing that the HIV, which is a virus, belongs to the family of viruses known as retroviridae and the genus lentivirus. Then you should be asking, why does it belong to the family of viruses known as retroviridae? It belongs to the family retroviridae because it encodes an enzyme, an RNA-dependent DNA polymerase enzyme known as reverse transcriptase, known as reverse transcriptase. This enzyme will be playing a very important role in the pathophysiology of HIV as a virus. We'll be looking at that in our next series. Then, you should also know that HIV contains three species defining retrovirus genes. Let's have a look at them one by one. The first one, we call it the GAG gene. It's a protein. What does it do? It encodes group-specific antigen proteins. That is, we are looking at the inner structural proteins. All right. Let's move ahead and talk about the next gene. The next gene, we will call it the pole gene. Pole gene. And when we say pole, it stands for polymerase. For the pole gene, what does it do? It encodes the RNA-dependent DNA polymerase. That is the reverse transcriptase, as we said. The reverse transcriptase. And it also encodes other enzymes such as integrase and protease. And these enzymes are also going to play an important role in the pathophysiology of HIV as a whole. And the question goes, how is the pole gene produced? The pole gene is produced as a result of the C-terminal extension of the GAG proteins. That means that the pole gene and the GAG gene, they are coming from the same proteins. Let's move ahead and look at the last type of proteins. And that is going to be the ENV gene. The ENV. M standing for envelope. ENV standing for envelope. The envelope gene. And what does it do? It encodes the viral envelope. And the viral envelope, we are referring to the outer structural proteins. And an example of that is going to be the glycoprotein 120, which is going to help the HIV to enter into the host cells when we talk about the pathophysiology. Let's move ahead and look at other features. You should know that HIV is a positive sense diploid single-stranded RNA virus. HIV is an RNA virus, you should know. It is a positive sense diploid single-stranded RNA virus. And the question will be arising. What do we mean by positive sense? When we say positive sense, it means that the viral structure contains the messenger RNA or similar to the messenger RNA. Hence, can be translated directly into proteins. But when we say negative sense, negative sense means that the structure of the virus is complementary to the messenger RNA. Hence, must be converted into the positive sense first before the translation. And a typical example of the negative sense 
virus is the Ebola virus. I hope it creates a click. Ebola virus. All right, let's move ahead. The next thing we are going to be talking about is the species of HIV. For the species of HIV, there are two. We have HIV-1 and HIV-2. When we take the HIV-1, you should know that it is more common globally. Worldwide, it is the most common species of HIV. If you are comparing to HIV-2, HIV-1 will be more common than HIV-2. The next feature of it is that HIV-1 has a greater risk of transmission as compared to HIV-2. Then, HIV-1 has a faster progression to AIDS as compared to HIV-2. Let's move on and look at HIV-2. For HIV-2, it is less common globally. If you are comparing it with HIV-1, HIV-2 is less common. But when you come to West Africa and you are looking at the incidence of HIV-2 in West Africa compared to the rest of the world, HIV-2 will be more common in West Africa than any part of the world geographically. But it doesn't bar the fact that HIV-1 will still be commoner than the HIV-2. Meaning that we are only making reference to HIV-2, not comparing it to HIV-1. HIV-2, only we are looking at HIV-2, it will be more common in West Africa than any other place geographically. Not in comparison to HIV, because HIV-1 is the more dominant species. Then you should know that HIV-2 has a lesser risk of transmission and also slowly progresses to AIDS. Then finally, let's talk about the CD4 receptor cells. They are cells with CD4 on their surfaces. And that will be acting as a receptor. And for the CD4 receptor cells, we are looking at the T helper cells. That's the T helper lymphocyte. We can think of dendritic cells, macrophages, and monocytes. I believe we've learned something extremely new. Before we end the lesson, I have a question for you. The question is, how will you distinguish between a nucleotide and a nucleoside? Kindly leave your answer in the commentary section. Kindly not forget to subscribe to my channel, like, share, and also comment the next concept you would like to see in my next tutorial session. My name is Dr. Dell, and this is Concept in Medicine. Bye-bye. Thank you.